Okay, I've had a lot of people request uh, more information on how I hang up my hammock, front to corner to corner, and also more information about how I actually built this pop top. And I will try to show you that. I didn't videotape any of it when I actually built it, but I did get some clips here that I hope will make it a little more clear. And if you have any more questions, just ask and I'll try to clarify it. But basically it started out with lots of thinking, making paper models, cardboard models, trying to figure out the folds, looking at origami um, projects to see what would work. And this is what I came up with. So once I, I bought the solar panel and started thinking about that as how I could use that on my van. And I think actually before I got the solar panel, I was already thinking about the pop top. I was rolling that around in my head. Yeah, I know I was because I was telling people about it when I was at the van build what I was thinking about doing to my van. Um, I had not thought about having the, the roof part of it actually as being the solar panel. I was planning on making the whole thing out of coroplast. But the solar panel actually worked out really good for that. Kind of killed two birds with one stone. So that became my measuring point and how I decided how big to make the hole in the van. And so that's based on the measurements of the solar panel. I cut out the hole, um, just drilled the throughout the side, the dimensions, and drilled the four corner holes so that with a hole big enough that I could fit the jigsaw blade through. And I cut it out, and it actually was a lot easier than I thought it would be. So before I cut the roof out, I had already built the whole box and had it attached onto the solar panel, and I worked the the folds while it was in, actually on the family room floor to get it to go up and down get the creases right see if it would actually work before I cut the roof <laughs> hole in the roof. And this here is a scrap of coroplast I had from another project that I was working on. I've got my measurements based on the solar panel I had which was almost a perfect fit for the top of my van so that's how I figured out my sizes and then I also wanted, didn't want it to be so high that I couldn't push it all the way up so I measured how high I wanted it so that I could stand up without my head touching the plastic on the top and getting static electricity making my hair stand up. So I have it up high enough so I can stand up and actually reach pretty well. So this here, from this corner all the way up to this corner, is 30 inches. So then I just me measured a 45 to get a 45 degree angle for the fold and then the width of the solar panel allowed me to have um, 36 inches wide so it's 36 inches from here to here and that was that and I've pushed this thing up and down like this at least a hundred times and I've done the flaps many many more times and I've read on some of the uh, ones where they make kayaks out of this and they say that they can be um, folded up a thousand times. Very durable. So again my size of the hole in my roof is based on the size of the solar panel. And this bottom piece, this coroplast is attached to this with contact cement, DAP contact cement. This is the DAP weld wood contact cement I use for gluing the coroplast to the solar panel. Glue the edge of the bottom edge of the solar panel which was about an inch. Pull it over the same distance. A tab on top of this. Glued that and attached that. It is pop riveted in these four corners where these brackets are that hold it up. Right now I have the external post holding it up because I peeled off this edge here so I can show you how that was attached on the bottom. So each, each one of these posts holds up the top. They are riveted down to here. And when I fold it up, I have to put them up here. And of course I take the fans out and close those lids. So that, I uh, have details here of how I attach that to the solar panel. 
It's actually just with contact cement and a flange. And then I put permanent Gorilla Tape over that to cover it up and make it look all black around the edge. And the idea, there's a, there's a flange around the outside that was cut to fit the form of the roof of the fan, but that kind of changed after I cut out the hole so that it didn't match as closely as I wanted to, but still works. Coroplast goes up, folds over one inch, and it's glued onto the bottom edge of this solar panel. And then I also made another lip, which goes from the outside edge to here and down. That would have been better. I would have had it go out and that lip was on the outside. Or maybe even better yet, would have just used this foam, which I put on the bottom, trying to seal the air when you're driving from getting underneath it. Probably would have been better just to put foam directly on the bottom here and have it so it squishes down onto the bottom. You set it down. But this works pretty good. Hasn't been any problem driving. And this Gorilla Tape is the new um, Gorilla Tape lease that's new to me. I've, first time I've seen it. And it's UV rated for outdoor use. So they call it permanent Gorilla Tape. It's never really not that much more than the regular Gorilla Tape. And even the regular Gorilla Tape lasts a long time. Now on the bottom edge, steel roof of the van, the butyl tape, the coroplast, sandwiched between um, the aluminum, three quarter inch aluminum by uh, that's about an eighth inch, and then that is riveted every six inches or so, or eight inches, whatever it worked out as, and that's what holds it on. Now this doesn't have to hold it up when I'm driving, because when I'm driving, it is held down onto the roof of the van with ratchet straps. So its attachment is pretty simple, and the butyl tape is pretty amazing for sealing it. And then also, you can see here, like in the corners, I put a little caulk. I caulked it on the outside, all around the outside perimeter. And then when it came time to attach it to the van, I think I had my son here to help me lift it up there. I can't remember. I almost think he had left already. He was gone for a month or two out working out in Virginia. So he did help me when I cut the, the hole through the roof, but he left that same day. So I set it up on there, lined it up as close as I could. And then I put the butyl tape along the edge, edges of the cut metal roof. And then I put the flanges on top of that. And on top of that, I put the uh, three quarter inch aluminum flat stock cut to length. And I riveted those down. And I did, obviously did one side at a time, work my way around. And so that's how it's attached to the roof. And then I made the four corner braces that hold it up but I also have them on the outside um, I needed one on the outside just to help lift it up when I first set it up so otherwise you're pushing on the glass and it's just a lot of weight didn't want to be doing that every time so this way when I get started I start by pushing it from the outside along the edge of the frame hold it up with one of those shower curtain rods and then I come inside and push up the other side and use these corner legs to hold it in place Yeah, a lot of people have asked how I hang up my hammock. I tied onto this handle, but I was afraid it was going to break, and you can see it's getting loose. So I tied onto the frame here with this loop using am steel string, which is probably the strongest rope there is out there. This skinny little string has a breaking point of like 1,500 pounds. So I drilled two holes through the lip here underneath the trim and just tied it through there onto the loop. See that clear enough? Two holes drilled through there in the am steel or Dyneema rope. And I have a steel ring that I just got at Walmart. 
Now, instead of clipping into the ring, I go right over it. And this way, I don't have to clip. I can just flip it up and turn it at a 90. And I've been using it like this for years, and it has never failed me. The nicest thing about it is that when you come in the morning to unhook it, you know, you do is twist it, and down it drops. So that's how it is in the front. And in the back, I'll show you the difference there. In the back here, I have it attached to the actuator arm that lifts up the tailgate on the van. And on this one, I actually have it looped right into the Dyneema string. So this is, a, the other kind is a hollow string. This one is a more tightly braided. It's actually a stronger string even though it's a quarter of the thickness. So, and this one I, I don't normally unhook. I just leave it up all the time. And I did have it hooked onto the hinges that are up here, but caused two problems. One, it was like six inches shorter, so my hymac had to be tied into more knots to make it so that it was short enough not to drag on the floor. And the other thing is that it did drip, water would drip down once in a while through it and follow the string down. But this works real good, it's very strong. And it's easy to use. So when I put my hammock away, I just drop the other end and roll it up and set it sideways here. That's where my sleeping bag is. I usually leave this sleeping bag in the hammock. Um, I sleep on it instead of inside it unless it's really cold. So it's just like having a little mattress inside my hammock. It makes it a little bit more comfortable. You don't feel the, the gathered edges of the hammock on your legs. Well, hopefully I got enough uh, clips to make it clear and if not just ask me and I'll do my best to answer it.